Have you ever had an old retro video game that has dirt or something on it? Maybe some Sharpie that you want to get removed? Today we're going to talk about the magic eraser. Once we know how it works, we can start to understand how we can properly use it and what kind of things we need to worry about for the safety of this material and the safety of the user of this material. Hi guys, my name's Schnickerman. I'm into retro video game collecting as well as modern video game collecting. But what a lot of you may not know about me is that I have a PhD in chemistry and I've always wanted to merge my love of retro gaming with my love of chemistry. And I think I finally found a new way of doing that. And the series is going to be called Retro Gaming Chemistry, where I look at different things that people use in the retro gaming industry in order to clean consoles, different video games, and to bring up real scientific papers that may um, show some information that might be useful to you, and just inform the community on what they're actually doing, because the more you know about what you're doing, the more likely you can use these techniques properly. So before we start talking about the magic eraser, first we need to talk about what it really is. The name Magic Eraser, it's very vague, right? And it's trying to just market the idea of this material can be used to take away dirt and different things on various types of materials and surfaces. The Magic Eraser is really a melamine formaldehyde polymer foam, which has a certain structure that's similar to a highly uh, abrasive material. So here we have a reaction scheme, but don't worry about its complexity. I'm going to break it down really simply to show you what's going on. So for these types of reactions, you have formaldehyde, which you add to a beaker, and you add some melamine to that as well. And you heat up the overall solution, which you want to make a little bit basic. Basically what happens is you have a condensation reaction, which is just a fancy way of saying that these two molecules will come together, you'll lose water molecules, and you'll get something like on the right hand side where you see this intermediate structure, which is basically just the combination of these two things. The reason it's an intermediate is because it goes through a further step. If you really want to get the polymer structure, you have to heat it up again, this time under slightly acidic conditions, and you can see that the intermediate is linked together multiple times. Here is a plastic bowl. And if you look closely at the bottom, it says melamine ware. And this was made in 1987. This has been my family for a long time. And then you look at this material, which is the magic eraser. And the two of the three chemicals that make this up are the same two chemicals that make up this plastic bowl. To make the polymer sponge-like or foam-like, you need to add a blowing or foaming agent three foaming agents that are commonly used to make these foams slash sponges are shown below. You have sodium bicarbonate, so sodium bisulfate, and isocyanate compounds. These three are used and when you add them to the polymer, it becomes porous and allows for that foam or sponge-like structure. Basically what makes this material different is the structure, the microstructure, and the nanostructure. If you were to zoom in with a very special type of microscope, you would see that the structure of this is much different than that. So that's the next thing we're about to take a look at. So right here you can see we're imaging the magic eraser with scanning electron microscopy um, using a scanning electron microscope or an SEM. And what this method is doing, it's basically producing an image by bombarding this material with a beam of electrons. And as they interact with this magic eraser, they produce signal and that shows the actual structure of the material. In A, you can see this is the melamine foam. So the scale bar at the bottom, it says 100 micrometers. So that basically means one times 10 to the negative six meters, that's the scale. It's strong, but it's also very porous and allows to have very significant abrasion so we can think about the structure of this copolymer and it's basically hollow as you can see in this image and what that allows for is that when you rub it against other materials it's still strong and the structure doesn't break 
so it actually rubs off a piece of the material. People like to compare it to really, really fine sandpaper, and that's fairly accurate. So what you're doing is you're just rubbing off some of the material. The dirt comes off. It looks brand new and clean. But however, if there are coatings on these materials, you'll rub those off as well. So you may see on it something like an NES game where it's a little bit shiny and smooth. When you start rubbing at it, the smoothness might go away. The shininess might also go away. Think of it kind of like a micro Brillo pad or something like that. You wouldn't want to rub that on your skin. It would really hurt. It would do some serious damage. So you're basically doing that to the material at a very low level. And note that this figure itself was adapted from a scientific paper from their figure two. And if you want to find this paper, I'll leave a link in the description. The citation's at the bottom. So now I think it's pretty apparent why they don't call this the melamine formaldehyde sponge because formaldehyde has some history with being fairly toxic and melamine actually as well, especially in countries like China, was used as an adulterant in milk products and was found to be fairly toxic. If we wanna look at the safety of a material, if it's chemical in nature, we wanna look at an MSDS or material safety data sheet. This MSDS specifically isn't for magic eraser, but it's for another melamine eraser called white magic. So here you can see the product name, what it's used for, as we scroll down, just so you know that I'm not making all of this up, look at the ingredient name, melamine formaldehyde polycondensate, otherwise known as formaldehyde melamine sodium bisulfate copolymer, which is what I was mentioning when we were talking about the actual reaction of this material. You can see the physical and chemical properties are fairly inert. They're not affected by very much, except for very high temperatures and it can be pretty hazardous if it was set on fire. It will produce lots of different decomposing molecules which are not good for you to breathe in. Even though you can't see it, there's gonna be particles of the sponge itself and the material you're rubbing that will go airborne, and you just don't really wanna breathe that. So since everybody has masks, just use a mask. Just to be extra safe if you want, you can buy some cheap plastic gloves and use that when you're rubbing the material so that way you don't get any of the dust from this or whatever you're rubbing on, on your, on your skin that may cause irritation. If you find this video really interesting, please share it around. I think it'll be a powerful tool to a lot of people in this community and just inform more uh, retro game enthusiasts on what we're actually using and how we can more properly utilize it and be safer overall. So thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos. You can see behind me I have my game collection and I'm really a retro gamer enthusiast. Like I said, I happen to be a chemist for my day job, but I think both are really cool and interesting. So see you guys in the next video. Peace.